Yesterday, yesterday morning, our colleagues were talking about accountability journalism in the U.S. I think the major distinction for which what I'm going to talk about is that in my country, in Nicaragua, there is no state accountability. There are no, sta there are no state of the law. So the press, the independent press, is the only institution that can play this role of promoting uh, accountability. Um, I started Confidencial 20 years ago as a weekly print newsletter, and it's still being printed in that way. 2010, under the inspiration of our friend Rosenthal and the Austin Forum, we became a, new, uh, a, a news website. Uh, so now we are both between the old and the new media. Uh, we created in 2010, uh, in 2000, I'm sorry, a television show, Esta Semana, it's a, it's a sh uh, show in open television in prime time Sunday night. Uh, we also produce an online style magazine for millennials, uh, new within our platform. And we have a very small newsroom of around 12 young journalists who are producing content for print, for digital, for open television, and also for video. So we are between old media and new media, but I have to say that old media gives us, at this point, more commercial revenue than new media. I mean, we get more, more revenue from advertising and television and from print subscription than from digital advertising. And therefore, we combine our efforts with grants from uh, different institutions. Uh, Daniel Ortega came back to power in Nicaragua in 2007, and he imposed an authoritarian regime. Full, that means full concentration of power, no rule of the law, no independence in the powers of the state. In theory, this is a multi-party system. In practice, it's a one-party system. The private business has an alliance with the government, and that means that there is a sacrifice of democracy and transparency, and therefore independent media is the only actor demanding accountability from the government. The war against the media, uh, Ortega, just like Donald Trump did it recently, well, Ortega did it 10 years ago. He proclaimed the independent media as the enemy, and he called us journalists to be the sons of Joseph Goebbels. Uh, in Nicaragua, uh, there are no laws to exert control of the press, like in Ecuador and Venezuela. However, the state promotes campaigns of defamation and intimidation to induce self-censorship. In 2008, our offices were raided by the police and the district attorney office as part of a so-called criminal investigation alleging uh, money laundering. During 10 years in power, Ortega has never given a press conference, and his uh, bureaucrats, they have a uh, prohibition to give interviews to the independent media outlets. Uh, this prohibition covers everything, including police reports, health issues, even natural catastrophes. Therefore, public information is only available through official media, and the equivalent of FOIA law is not complied with. About 90% of open television and radio stations are controlled by the presidential family business and their private associate. How do we do journalism without access to public information? Well, we try to develop our own journalistic agenda. Uh, we cultivate independent sources mostly based on trust, um, professional ethics, and uh, we try to, well, we, we offer protection of anonymity to official sources that turn into whistleblowers. We double check the information they provide with independent sources. Uh, we focus on stories, trying to develop a, more, a better uh, narrative quality, and we try to use multimedia platforms we try to give visibility to individuals and groups who are victimized by the state and by power who defy authoritarian forces. And finally, and this is the most important thing, we battle every day uh, against the pressures of self-censorship. 
We try to develop alliances in order to resist public and private reprisals. Uh, I, will, I will say that the independent press in Nicaragua, like in other countries uh, that face this kind of situation, we are in a situation of survival. I used to say to my friends, we are like Alcoholicos Anonymous. We win a battle every day, we survive, and we're ready for the next day. These are some stories that we have investigated because, uh, because although there is this restrictions to access of public information. There is good quality journalism being done in Nicaragua by Confidencial, by Esta Semana, by La Prensa, and that some very other few independent media outlets. We investigated the illegal appropriation of more than $4 billion in a 10-year in a period in state cooperation from Venezuela that now is under the private control of the presidential family business groups which includes the purchase of a private TV station. This, is, this was Channel 8, where I used to work as an associated uh, pro independent producer. Another story is about environmental destruction. There are, no, there are no leaks in this story. There are only food reporting deep in the forest. We investigated the, the, the deforestation and destruction of the Bosawas Natural Reserve in the northeast part of Nicaragua, the biggest biosphere reserve in Central America. And we also investigated the climate of violence and persecution against indigenous population by landowners in a series of several investigations. Now, we've done a lot of work trying to discover what is dark, the inner circle of power, the who is who in the Nicaraguan House of Cards, which is not fictional, but is a real version of House of Cards in our country, in which uh, Rosario Murillo, the president wife, and now is also the vice president of the country, emerges as the most powerful woman in power. Another story has to do about the failed promise of the interoceanic uh, Meg Canal in Nicaragua. A mysterious, we develop a series of investigations on the mysterious Chinese entrepreneur Wang Jing. We did most of the reporting in Managua. We reported with uh, databases in Hong Kong, and we had some support from a Latin American reporter in China to, to dig on Wang Jing network of enterprises. He was wanted a, a 100 year concession to build a canal at a cost of $50 billion. Nothing has been built or done. And we have focused on the sovereignty issue, but also on the major environmental threat of the Lake of Nicaragua and the social cost of this project, or this threat, that has already produced some kind of a peasant rebellion in the projected canal route. Uh, finally, we do a lot of stories on human rights violations, uh, cases of impunity, uh, um, abuses against human rights defenders, peasant, women, workers, and members of the LGBTI community affected by discrimination. Now, finally, in spite of the publication of these and other stories, I have to admit that nothing has changed in Nicaragua. No official investigation by Congress, by the uh, public ministry, by the Supreme Court of Justice has ever been done uh, because there is a system of total impunity. Uh, however, we are not policemen, we are not judges, and as journalists, we cannot substitute the role of the state institutions when they don't work. Uh, therefore, our first challenge remains to keep the credibility of our audiences among the pervading polarization. Uh, they try to discredit our work, saying that all the critical investigations that we do are the result of that we have a political agenda or that we are part of the opposition. So to keep credibility is number one. Uh, the second challenge has to do with promoting innovation in our relationship with the audiences, uh, despite the fact that Nicaragua has one of the lowest internet connectivity rates. And last but not least, the third challenge is to achieve financial sustainability, combining commercial sales with grants from abroad. This is particularly difficult because of the alliance that exists in Nicaragua between the government and the private sector that generates a hostile climate towards the critical role of the independent press. Thank you.